Oh, oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle, all oh, the shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. We got the Georgia 3%. GSF. GSF in the hizzle. I want everybody to, I guess starting with you, Chris. Introduce yourself and we'll hold out table, yeah. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name's Chris, a.k.a. Blood Agent, uh, Commanding Officer, Georgia Security Force 3%. Founder of uh, 3% Security Force. Guns up. All right. Oh, you ain't yourself, man. Gone, man. You ain't yeah, doing yeah, here, man. I've been <laughs> gone for a minute. I've been up in Cleveland, man. What's up, man? It's Yanga. You know um, what it is and how we do. Just glad to be back. Powerful show. Been catching the last couple of shows. You've been missing oh, man, I missed out. Shows, I missed out. I didn't got gaveled to show you the start and I got gaveled. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Right. I just, 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 just happy to be here, man, and, and looking forward to this show. All right. To your left. All right. Uh, Michael, uh, AKA Delta 12. And, um, he gonna need a mic, right. Yanga boy. He, he, he need soft spoken there. Right. He gonna need a mic there. All right. All right. Um, Michael, uh, AKA Delta 12. Um, new to Georgia Security Force, 3%. Security Force three percent, and also part of the anonymous movement. Um, we got together with these guys for the purpose of unity. Um, on to the next, cool. My name is William, aka Snake, a uh, member of Georgia Security Force three uh, percent since December last year. Okay. Uh, Agu members, what we're looking for, love it. Have a blast. Everybody can actually find some uh, a movement to get into to, to, to find common ground and get together and, and just you know come together and fight for what they believe in. Okay, okay. You guys will share that mic right there. Yeah. yeah. My name is Jason, aka Scorpion, Georgia Security Force. Uh, love our Constitution. We the people. That's the way it should be. That's the way it's all for everybody. Everybody should think we the people. Glad to be here. All right. I'm Joe, uh, also known as Highway Nomad. I'm in uh, Georgia Security Force. I'm a communications officer, also a uh, an oath keeper, and uh, I look at it as my job to uh, keep everybody communicating uh, around the country about liberty and freedom. And uh, Anything uh, that is uh, going wrong, uh, we uh, talk about that as well. All right. Uh, I'm going to get down to business here, gentlemen. Get down to it. God damn it. We want to march up as we climb up the Stone Mountain. Y'all want to stop our free speech here. Who's stopping? Who's stopping? Who's stopping the free speech here? Got all these groups like Anonymous, the Black Panthers. Yeah. yeah. George, were y'all part of that too, Chris? Locking our... We were we were there at Stone Mountain, yes, sir. Okay, okay. I, you know what? I got a question. Though, okay. Because this is it, you know, and I love, man. Let me tell you, this is probably one of the best and most enlightened times I have. Okay, we were talking about earlier the pre-show conversation. We were talking about prejudice and racism. And I'm not right. up front. I have my prejudice. We pulled up, and I said, "Man, son, get me out with these white dudes." And they got guns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, what the hell is right, right, right. You know. So, but during the, con the course of the conversation, man, it was it was really good. So let me ask. Let me go straight to it and ask some questions. What is the end game? What is the role of the militia and specifically Georgia Security Forces Three Percent? What 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 do you want to see? What are you guys? Right. Why did you form? What are you trying to accomplish? What is your end game? Simply put, sir, it's using the Second Amendment right to bear arms to protect the First Amendment freedom of speech. We want to see the people taking point. We want to see the people. You know, rise up and say, enough of this. Uh, we want to take the power back away from the politicians and get this country back on track. So uh, when the people are ready to stand up, we'll be ready uh, to provide the teeth to that message. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's that it, Exactly, man. You know, it's we the people. You know, stand up, be together. Stand, stand together. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't, don't fall for this propaganda. Don't be a sheep. Be, be a sheepdog, mm -hmm. you know, stand together, be united. They, they have united, some people that man. say, you know, you know um, we have police officers, we have the military, we have people that will protect 
the rights of the people. Who are you guys, private citizens, want to arm yourselves and stuff like Who Who are you guys who gives you the authority, what say what, you know, inspired that made you feel like that that was necessary? I love that, Yanger. I love that because I was asked that question like, uh, you know, a couple times, man. Everybody here is the highest form of authority. Mm -hmm. Everybody here is the highest form of If you believe in God and God's your higher authority, awesome. But next to God, I'm the highest authority in my life. You know, and I don't, I'm not bowing down or subservient. I obey laws, but I'm not subservient to them. Um, the, the second point you were making, mm -hmm. what was that again? About the police officers and things police like that. Police officers, yeah, we, hire, we yeah. hire people to do that. You know, and the same thing goes with a, you, you, what the government gives you, the government can take away. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have um, you know, splinter groups in every organization that, uh, you know, that they're bad, they're bad apples. There's, there's rotten apples in every bunch. We're not, uh, not anti-police, but we recognize that there's police brutality. We recognize that there's unjustified killings. And when the people come together and they want to uh, redress those grievances with good luck, one, trying to find a place to uh, <laughs> right. protest and not get right. harassed. But two, yeah, if the people step forward and say, we want to redress these grievances, you know, then we want to be there and provide the teeth. Smile, you know, full battle rattle. Yeah, here's the microphone, sir. Here's the sheriff. Please explain, you know, please ask the sheriff why his deputies uh, were pulling guns on a uh, 10 year olds building tree houses in their backyard mm -hmm. at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a problem with that, right? right. So yes, we need to be there to protect the voice of the people. Uh, the military, they're not allowed to operate inside the continental United States of America. That would be a violation of posse comitatus. Mm -hmm. Or you defer to state law as it is in Georgia. Everybody's sitting at this table, whether you know it or not, is a militiaman. Mm -hmm. From 18 to 45, yes, you're sir. all militiamen. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. So, so we, we got to get militia, we gotta every understanding right. man or woman right. so, is militia. And that's, that's interesting. One of the things that we... I'm sorry, sir, man. You know, I get on the... Oh, no. Play, I, mean, I, know, I, mean, I might also add that yeah, politics is, is uh, full with well-meaning people. And it's also full of uh, corrupt people seeking power. That's right. And... Um, they're not afraid to use that power in unconstitutional ways to maintain their power base. And that's one of the things that the militia is, is here to protect against, is uh, uh, corrupt power regimes, basically, mm -hmm. uh, wherever you find them in the United States that are you know, engaged in unconstitutional activity, whether it be state, local, or even federal. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to ask this question. I get down to the nitty gritty. Lloyd Finnegan and the Bundy brothers. Chris, can you, were, y'all can all break, what, what happened with that situation? Um, you know, because I want to, I want to, you know, that, that situation, you know, we didn't hear about it until the aftermath. Until after Lloyd Finnegan got killed and the Bundy brothers got arrested. And they arrested the father after he had landed on the thing. So we got, of course, the CNBCs, the NBC News is their take on what happened. They, of course, demonized, you know, that part of the militia. So can you uh, kill a scene on that situation? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd love to, absolutely, sir. Okay, okay. Um, well, what you had in Oregon at the Maui Refuge, it's a uh, situation where a group of people, they were going out to Harney County, they were uh, rallying and protesting. First and foremost, the uh, unconstitutional punishment that was handed down to the Hammonds. Long story short, the Hammonds were uh, ranchers. And the backstory is what was happening at Bundy Ranch. And that's where you start with Bundy Ranch and you see uh, a groundswell of opposition to BLM and the government encroaching on, on the land that the people use to survive on. You know, you got uh, people, ranchers, they, they put the cows out there, they feed on the grass, and then they you know, slaughter them and make their living that way. Right, right. But then when you have the BLM uh, or the government coming in and grabbing that land, no, nope, this is uh, federal land and we're gonna protect the wild desert turtles, tortoise and uh, endangered, all of, turtle. endangered tor okay. turtles. All right, that's what they say. So, and it's all an effort to, to push the ranchers off of their land. They want to push, they use that false in their domain to, because there's minerals underneath the surface that Harry Reid won. 
wants, that Hillary Clinton wants, that every politician wants. It's uh, there's gold. There's uh, uh they're, they're trying the to break China. The uranium. The uranium. uranium. It's, like uh, uh, it's okay. for money. And uh, so the Hammond started a brush fire. It spilled over into BLM area. And the judge ruled, all right, there's about $50 worth of damages here. Pay the $50 fine. And uh, they did like a, a year in jail. Mm. All right. So then the government comes up and says, they pick up the case. After they've already paid the fine restitution, they've already served the jail time and says, nope. You are terrorists. Wow. You, and not only did they violate double jeopardy, right? But they charged them as freaking terrorists for a, a brush fire that spilled beyond their uh, their fence line. Mm -hmm. And they they said, "Go back to jail. You're going to do five years." And it is like a prison <coughs> system uh, assistance because the uh, the gentleman is old. You know, he's probably going to die in prison as a terrorist. Mm. So the people in Oregon came together, and rightfully so, said this is wrong, and you know this shouldn't happen in America. But we see it happening from Bundy Ranch, Bunkerville, Nevada, to Harney County in in Oregon. So they came together, and a group splintered off and said, "We're going to we're going to bring awareness to this fight. We're going to bring awareness." So they go to this public bird watching facility. And that is open to the public. Right. You go in there, pick up a flyer, and look at some birds. Mm -hmm. So they go in there, and it's a you know there, it's like a sit-in, and uh, it's basically a sit-in, and it's public property. I don't know how they could be charged with uh, at the most trespassing with it being uh, public property, but that that should have been the only charge being weighed in the balance. Yeah, so the structures there were unoccupied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the season, and we're basically uh, unlocked as well. These people didn't break nothing mm -hmm. to get into that uh, building. But what they did when they got there, they they uncovered a, a data mine, a data mine. They got this these counties in Oregon and Nevada. They are mapped out with big, you know, pirate ship map treasure maps right. with big X's on them. This is where the money is. We need to push that there's this parcel of land that belongs to, uh, you know, Michael. There's this parcel of land that belongs to Jason. We got to boot them off so that we can have, you know, control over that land. And they right. start pumping that information out. And the government is like, whoa, you know, kind of like Eric Snowden, you know, they're, they're bringing awareness to this oh Ill illegality, this, uh, this um, shit that's going on. So they went out there and made a stand, and and so let me get this for record from people out there. So Errol Snow is not trained. No, no. Okay, we want to yeah make that clear because that's another thing that people always paint this picture. You know the Errol Snows, the Julian Sanjes, uh, Bradley Nannies. You know they 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 paint them as all their trainers, but you know, I mean you get y'all takes on that too. Man. If you ask any a non, we'll tell you that. Eric Snowden to us is a hero. He's right, an exactly. American hero. He's for he brought the news to the people, not to the government. You right. know, he's telling the people what the government is doing against us. Right. It's the government that labeled him tra traitor, not the people. Right, right. You know, so I mean, yeah, he's basically a hero to us. Yeah, he told us what a lot of us suspected all along. Right. Uh, yeah. We were basically being spied on uh, by uh, the, our government, and, uh, the NSA, and. Uh, uh, what more credible source can you get? Uh, someone like, uh, you know, Edward Smith. And, uh, yeah, he's a hero in my I have a question I want to go back to, and then, you know, everybody, they know Yanga, everybody knows out there. So I'm going to ask the questions that a lot of people want. Why is the militia seen as a predominant white male organization, which we know this is not, I don't be on my throwing you out there, because I was talking, like I said, I was surprised to find that sitting here with the uh, GSFF three percenters, that they got a Puerto Rican in the mix, we got an Irish here, you know, so I'm, you know, I was pleasantly, surpri uh, pleasantly surprised, but why do you think that you guys get a, a rap, it's quoting snakes, so it ain't for me, a bunch of pet, Scorpion, I'm sorry, the snake is here, yeah, Scorpion, Scorpion, a bunch of peckle woods in the woods with guns, your words, um, why do you think you guys get that rep? Why do you think that is? Because well, mainly that's that's what they portray. Mm -hmm. Any any video you see, anything, any pictures you see, it, they show predominantly white members. Mm -hmm. Which you know, like you said, we got the Puerto Rican, we got the Irish, we've got a commanding officer in South Carolina. There's a black gentleman. Mm -hmm. uh, Shout out to the brother. 
I mean, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, it, it's not that we're all. It's, it's not the fact that it's a it's an all white. Uh, we, we don't discriminate. Right. No. No means, man. Right. No means, man. right. Yeah. Right. The perception. Well, it's demonization, basically. Why do you think that? Why do you it think fits, that? It fits certain people's agenda for keeping um, people apart in this mm. country mm. and not working together. Because yeah. mm. uh, you know. Um, God forget, you know, forbid the people getting together and uniting uh, under the Constitution and and uh, the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. You can't have that. Uh, okay. It, there are people, like I said, there, there are corrupt people in government that uh, are influenced uh, by Marxist ideology. Some of them by Marx, some of them by Hitler, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, by and a lot of fascists. Uh, it's perception, negative spin, you know, I would encourage everybody to do their own research mm -hmm. and and get to the reality, get to the truth on your own. Um, yeah, and I think it plays to the, uh, you know, the government, I think it plays, to, you know, they're, they're using the media to spit it out and, and label it, you know, mischaracterize it because it's scary. It's scary when you think about uh, the fact that we the people have the right to bear arms and we the people have the right to abolish government if it becomes too tyrannical. Mm -hmm. So would, would you want, would you, if you were in a, a government position or a politician, would you want to see 330 million people right. saying, I have this right, you are messing this country up and we are firing exactly. you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's better to say, whoa, those people, stay away from them, you know, but but if you do your research and you look at state law, you're all uh, members of the unorganized militia anyway. Right. So, but we need we need positive, uh, you know, alternative media. That's a, that's the only place that's going to give us a fair shake. Um, the the, uh, the mainstream media, lamestream media, they are going to dog us to yeah. death. And and it's nothing more like we were saying earlier than to, you know, you the people, we the people, you know, have a message. And we want this country, you know, back. We want to, you know, fuck Stand the government. Yeah. Fuck the government. Yeah. You know, um, get, take back your freedom. When the people are ready to uh, to march and stand together and make that happen, then you're going to have militia there to make sure that the police or the military mm -hmm. or any any ABC agency, they're not going to be there to, to arrest and and step on and fuck with and spit on the people. Now these are the people. And we're going to stand with the people. So, you know, our we're we're, tight, we're joined at the hip. You mm -hmm. know, in that sense, uh, you're, you're not going to see a militia going rogue. Not not a legitimate, you know, state militia or constitutional militia going rogue and advocating open warfare against the government. But but we feel like it's not enough to just sit there in the woods and train for the day we hope never comes. Mm -hmm. We want to be more active and say, hey, wake up. Your government's lying to you. Yeah. Right. Please get out and do something, and we'll be there to back you up. And and you, they will. People will have, you know, people like us, and everybody should be like us. Mm -hmm. You know, black, white, pea green, it don't it matter. Don't matter. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you said it because I know uh, during the um, Ferguson, you know, they had the, uh, I believe the, uh, the Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers. Yeah, the Oath Keepers come mm -hmm. out. And I remember. When they first came out, they were said they were for the people, and then later on, I saw the media split and said white supremacists coming out oh, yeah. against them. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, they mm -hmm. put it that quick. Flip it, flip it quick, man. No, they, 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 quick. That's they, what they, they do. They'll flip the script. Yeah. And the thing, thing is, the people eat it up. Right, right. You know, they believe it. Right, right. And whatever the media tells them, they're like, wow, that's got to be the truth. Yeah. Right. You right. know, instead of self educating Sometimes themselves, it's you know, the furthest thing from the truth. It's the furthest thing from the truth. Right. You know, Highway yeah. Nomad, you said something that was interesting, man, that we didn't get a chance to really touch on. You were talking about um, the militia, and you were talking about the suburbs and other areas, and you said that the same things could happen in our urban centers, from police brutality to misconduct of, of police officers, if those of us in our urban centers formed militias. Could you go a little bit, expound a little bit more on that, man? I thought that was real interesting. That you well, said. How would you go about doing that, and what does that look like? Because in the, in the hood, they call that a gang. But what would be the difference right, right. between, you know, expect a militia? How do you become a, you know, so-called a constitutional militia, m militia, militianist, militia, a militia, militia, militia as opposed all, all to all you need is one good man or even one oh, good woman to you, man. It's, it's a good or one good woman yeah. who um, basically 
um, is driven to, 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 um, to create a, um, a better neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Instead of hiding behind your curtains mm -hmm. and watching the drug deals go down and the people and the drive-bys and the shootings, mm -hmm. um, you, you can form a constitutional militia and uh, instead of having uh, untrained people in neighborhood watches that mm -hmm. may uh, may or may not know uh, the correct rules of engagement. Hey, now the, uh, what was um, that Trayvon Martin's killer uh, uh, guy's name? Uh, uh, about, uh, Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. Well, we, I don't know what his what? training. Um, and frankly, I don't know much about you know that situation. Yeah. But I do know that um, you know you need to be trained to do malicious stuff okay. and, and, and be out in the neighborhood. You got to know. Um, what's life threatening and what isn't. Life Our training is very, and, very and you have to have to have important. a certain amount of courage and um, and commitment. And real quick, to what end? You know, if, if we were out to what end? If we were going out and trying to achieve illegal ends, mm -hmm. we're not a militia. We're a gang. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're a gang, and yeah. you're engaged in illegal. You have illegal ambitions. Mm -hmm. Then you're not a militia. Man. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Let me, I have one question I want to shoot to Mike. I forgot, AKA. It's Mike uh, Delta 12. Delta 12. Yeah, Delta 12. Being the, 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 the Puerto Rican brother, coming into the, what brought you to the militia? And what, what was like your first, you know? Well, uh, I'll put it in uh, my own personal perspective. Yeah. Um, being raised in New York, I've seen a lot of separations between uh, ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, separations between ethnic backgrounds and gangs like you guys were talking about earlier. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've, I, I, I was watching these guys on Facebook, you know, and um, watching the uh, situation in uh, Arizona, was it? Or uh, Nevada, Nevada, Nevada uh, yeah. the Bundy Ranch situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was interested, you know, militia protecting people, you know what I mean? Protecting their families and, um, you know, just uh, getting ready for you know, something that we need to be ready for, whether it happens or not. And um, I felt like I couldn't have fallen under a better leadership, you know, well, and uh, it's, cool though. it's just uh, he brought like minded people together. And I like that. I bring like minded people together, too. Mm -hmm. I think we all do in our own uh, personal situations and stuff. And, um, you know, I, I like it. Uh, these guys are like my brothers and I don't even know them, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, to be comfortable around uh, a group of strangers that that seem more like family rather than strangers it's a good feeling you know it's a really good feeling well and, it, uh, it, you know. when you become a leader in order to become a leader in the militia movement and especially uh georgia's or security force three percent is you become a lightning rod hmm. you because uh, you're a threat to certain uh entities that don't want to see uh, the people educated as far as their rights, uh, much less their rights defended uh, to go out for a redress of grievances. And, um, you know, so um, it, it, it takes someone with a, a, a pair to do that. Do you guys come as a, me as a, a, a panther, I know I've come under repression, police repression a lot. Do you guys, have you guys suffered Pressure from police or from the state or anything like that? We have uh, our monthly rally at CNN Center uh, across the building. They've come up, told us, oh, you can't do this here, you can't you mm. can't do this like you're doing it. And, you know, we know we can. Yeah. And end up, they realize that they were wrong and we were right, and they go away and leave us alone. Mm. Okay. So it's just but about it, 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 right. do, it, it happens all the time. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not just one one group of people that that, that, that falls on. That, and that goes back to uh, overpasses to uh, overpasses for America. Uh -huh. you know, the people that are standing on the uh, bridges with their signs, you know, remember oh, yeah. oh, remember yeah. Benghazi yeah. and uh, you know term limits, and they're getting a political message out there. Well, after uh, a crazy person drove by and pointed a weapon at them, you know, shut the fuck up, we're gonna shoot you. Then they appealed to us, and hey man. You know, they're, they're trying to shoot us, so yeah. can you help us out? So we go out there, and we put armed people on the bridge, you know, 
you know, one end of this bridge, one and on the other end of the bridge, and make and, and scan the traffic coming through. Make sure nobody's, you know, yeah, hanging out the window with pistols. Assault them with pistols. Yeah. So uh, cops come out there, you know, and you see a lot of videos out there, and we were engaged in one of them too, where cops would just straight up say, "You're breaking the law. You can't have firearms at, a, at an assembly, and you're going to jail." And that happened to us in Valdosta, where this dude, he, the cop, was going between his gun and his bracelets. I'm gonna count to three. All of y'all are going to jail. All of y'all are going to jail right now. One, two, <coughs> stand down, stand down. They had the right to bear arms, you know, standing on a bridge. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. You know, past the crow and the salt and pepper. Yeah. So now I got this dude on video, <laughs> yeah. you know, recanting the story. Well, I didn't know shit. Well, you're like a law enforcement officer, you know. We, you know, give us a citation. Give us a statute. Yeah. You know, no, no, you're, you're just all bad people and you're going to jail. Yeah. Or, uh, or, uh. FBI, man. FBI. Yeah, lots of cops drink they, the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Nobody people, should have guns but yeah, us. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people are freaking thinking that the FBI is on everybody's nuts. Uh -huh. And and that, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, that's some paranoid, schizophrenic shit. I mean, being, you, you step up in the militia, expect a phone call, expect a visit from the FBI. Yeah. And, and I had the other. Oh, you're tagged. You're definitely yeah, tagged. Yeah, you know, yeah. I had the unfortunate experience, man, where uh, this one guy says, <clears throat> I want to join your militia. And I say, All right, when you get to Georgia, give me a call. And, you know, a year later, he gives me a call and says, you know, Revolution starting this week. Uh, I ain't going to tell you anything, but, uh, you know, everybody's breaking camp and, uh, you know, you're going to know what's up. And I'm like, Whoa, whoa, what the hell is he, what's, yeah, what the hell is he talking yeah, about? Yeah. And then, you know, three days later, FBI. You know, they're like, uh, "Mr. Hill, where are you at?" And I'm like, "I'm buying, I'm buying a soccer ball for my kids." He's like, "You stay right there. We're coming." I'm like, "Yeah, uh, -uh. Yeah. <laughs> right." I, I'm gonna take. I took my kids over to a friend's house. I'm like, "Y'all watch my kids. I don't know what's up." Yeah. And me and my wife, you know, we get there and she's videotaping it. And uh, you know, they're in my yard and they got a uh, law enforcement from uh, Henry County. One person supposedly has to be there to watch uh, the federal activity right. going on and it's like and my wife's watching I'm like what the fuck you know they're like we just want to talk just want to talk and I'm like you know hell no yeah you know I ain't got nothing to say to you Mr. Hill it ain't like that just you know just let us talk we can go around back I'm like uh all right check it out I invite you into my house as a friend I can boot you the fuck out of my house yeah. whenever I want right yeah. it was like yeah <clears throat> all right come on yeah he sat at my table He's like, what do you know about this guy? I'm like, uh, well, he gave me a call, you know, a week ago and said the revolution was starting. So uh, and he didn't give me any details and all this, but and then they wanted to ask about, and I told him, hey, he said the revolution was starting. It was a phone call, 30 minutes, and I told uh, a guy named William Lumen and uh, an old, what turned out to be a snitch, Mark Kessler, a, a, a fucking plant. Huh. So uh, so I told them to about it, and, uh, and, and from there, you know, they got onto a private encrypted chat and they started making arrangements to buy pipe bombs and thermite grenades and all this other wow. shit. Wow. So that shit happened Friday. Yeah. Saturday morning, uh, I read in the paper, three jokers were arrested in Rome, Georgia, yeah. buying pipe bombs and thermite grenades. Uh -huh. So, and after, you know, the, the people in the militia movement use that against me to this day to say that I'm, I'm a fed, I'm an informant, I'm helping out enemy I caused three people to get arrested and I'm like yeah you know read the docket yeah. you know read the case and, but nobody's gonna fucking take time to read, read that the shit. case right yeah. then right. after that you know they probably a year later with the border patrols going on they call me up hey we heard that uh, some of your guys are going to you know guard the border you know yeah well you know uh, some of them may some of them might not you know what's up well you, what authority do you have to go and do that or what authority do they have and do that I'm like well you know if you had, if you were doing your fucking job, then I guess they wouldn't be out there. So it's on them. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I, and I'm just, you know, I had that one meeting with the FBI and then it was like a follow up conversation. But, you know, I don't, you don't talk to me about fucking GSF. You know, if you're a law enforcement mm -hmm. agent, and you want to know about what's going on outside of our perimeter. Mm -hmm. You know, hell, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this and that and the other, what I know. Right. Um, but, uh, especially if it's illegal. Don't want to see anybody, innocent people getting hurt. Right, that's right. But, you know, if you're asking me about my organization, 
you, you better get a warrant and take me to jail because I ain't saying shit. Right. But I know what we do is fucking above board and legal. Yeah. So that's why I ain't worried. I, I ain't on no watch list. I, they ain't scoping me out. We're, mm -hmm. we're good to go. We police ourselves. That's what any any good constitutional militia has to do mm -hmm. is release yourself. Mm -hmm. If you get uh, racist in instigators right. uh, or um, government that's agents yeah. in there yeah. uh, that say, "Well, let's let's uh, attack so and so, let's assassinate right. this person, yeah. let's blow this up," yeah. you like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, um, uh, I'll get back to you on yeah. that. And is yeah, that a real we, problem we with that? We, we tell our commander, and our commander knows what the hell to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't discriminate against the police either, law enforcement. But, yeah. You know, if you want to come and join the militia, you're more than welcome. Yeah. You know, come and join us. Because you're you know, above board. There's a, there's a lot of law enforcement out there that's, you know, pro-Constitution. Right, mm -hmm. right. And they understand what we do. Yeah. Okay. You know, and they're, they're welcome just like anybody else. Yeah. Right, right. You know. And be, yeah, be honest up front. Be honest up front. Yeah. You know, don't be trying yeah. to be sneaky about it. Right, right, right. right. You know. I'm here to bust y'all. You're here to train and be a part of it because it's, it's a brotherhood. It's is a friendship. Right, right. It's, and I got to trust you. Right, so no secrets, basically. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. Wanted to, I wanted to uh, touch on that because I know... I mean, I love how during the Klan rally, we all came together. And I noticed even, I'm not going to call out the groups, but you have this one person that want to get shit started. And I'm like, if we all, you know, one thing I want to, I want to thank Anonymous because the first thing I saw, I got there late to, to the rally and I saw, you know, a bunch of Confederate flags. And so based on the media, I associated that with the Klan. You know what I'm saying? So if it wasn't not only for Anonymous, but you guys saying, look, you know, we were able to communicate and talk it out because I was like, well, damn, I asked, I asked people when I'm getting there, where the clan at? They were like, oh, well, they're way over there. And I saw you guys with the Michigan Confederates, and I was like, I was confused. But we all communicated. You know what I'm saying? But the what? Um, Michigan Confederates. The Michigan, yeah. How do you Michigan. be a how do you be a, how do you be a Confederate from Michigan? Is that like? Well, we're gonna interview them. Okay, I we're, we're gonna to interview them. them. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna. In fact, you know, we got we're gonna interview not only the Michigan Confederate, we're gonna view the Sharps, skinheads against racial prejudice. I can't wait to that day. Right, right. I can't wait to that. Yeah. Well, you know, I grew up with them, so yeah, I know. Yeah, I know Cali, about them. Everything goes yeah. down to California. Yeah, so tell, tell them I'm sorry. I made one comment on Facebook on, on that line, and it was like. You know, we, we made the KKK and skinheads jump in the copters and fly away. Right. But then this one guy was like, you know, don't call it, you know, skinheads. We're skinheads. And I'm, that was new to me. But Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but it, it got, you know, buried under, uh, it was really busy during that weekend. Yeah. So I guess it's weird, you know, to say I'm a skinhead, but we're cool. Uh, whoa. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like well, listen, you know, so tune in when we yeah. do the <laughs> interview. Because I'm like, how does that, that work? That one was a yeah. new one on me when he so showed up. Jack, and I see the jacket. jacket. I see the colors on the back of his jacket. And I was like. What? Yeah. yeah. And then he when explained, you, read, you know. When you read the, those colors on there. They actually explain sharp stands for uh, skinheads skin against, against racial, racial prejudice. prejudice. You yeah. can use that. You can use that same reasoning with uh, the Confederate flag. I was, that was that's my next question. Today. That was going to be my next thing because it's like, like you said, the skinheads against racial prejudice. Uh, in that, how do you distinguish? Because, right. like you said, you know, you don't want to take away from anyone's heritage. The flag, the people have a heritage tied to that flag, and and it's a part of a southern heritage. For some people, it means one thing. For other people, it means something different. But how do you distinguish? And what do you say to people that, and I'm sure some of us, people down here, Southerners, that hold to their heritage, how do you make that distinction between this is part of our heritage and the white supremacists and the hate groups right. using that, that same flag? Well, I my granddad had, grew up in Stone Mountain. Uh -huh. And he knew the Venables, which were in the Klan. Okay. And, had the mountain and all that, and he he you know he always taught me that you know what they do is what they do. It's 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 not condoned. It's not right. Yeah. But I had family that died for the flag, fighting right. against the government. Right. Right. It had nothing to do with the slaves because hell, my family didn't own slaves. Right. My family were the slaves. Right. Right. It, they you know but they fought and died under that. That's. Why I, I, you know, I have the flag. I've carried the flag. I've flown yeah. the flag. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln was the first tyrannical president. 
Lincoln was. Maybe. Well, you have a lot of big. They you probably know, uh, probably uh, black uh, people uh, that don't know the on, truth about Lincoln are you know, probably shaking in their boots. Let me get back. Get back. I to know the Republican Party that having a fit. That, that there, there's a very there's we need to uh, be very very clear, you know, on our role in that because. You know, it, not, it, it does not have to necessarily mean that we were there because we believe in carrying the Confederate flag. Right. But we were there because they had a good message and they came to us and said, hey, we're going to be out there. And we thought that there were going to be clan there mm-hmm. that were going to be fucking with them. Because they so, were flying the flag and not representing well, what the, the clan, clan were like. we, okay. we thought they were going to be fighting with so the clan. Right. So we, we were kind of we're kind of like neutral. Mm-hmm. But we have to uh, agree right. with the platform in order to you know go out there and put your nuts on the line and uh, stand in front of some bullshit. Right. So it's like you got the freedom of speech and as a militia we'll defend your freedom of speech because you know we like the message. Right. But to um, you know, go back, and and I can agree with it, and, and I will I will offer you know myself uh, to that because I mean I have my personal view of the uh, Confederate flag, and I look at it like the difference between Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln. Thomas Jefferson says right to self determination. Mm-hmm. Abraham Lincoln says you try to break away and we'll bust the cap in your ass when you when yeah. you're moving. Yeah. So I think I think when if if you believe in the right to self determination. Then you you have to believe that people can break away, you know, the states or the union, and and do what they want to do, do their own thing, let them be free to do it. Yes. Shit, the yes. government owns. Uh, uh, yes. well, I'll, I'll stop at that. But uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the beginning of the end of the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution. What was the beginning of the end? How well, we, uh, well man? basically the uh, the sovereign states okay. had. Uh, were basically involved in uh, many arguments mm-hmm. with the federal government over things like trade mm-hmm. uh, and the slavery issue. Mm-hmm. Taxes. And uh, they couldn't uh, couldn't come to an agreement, so they said, "Okay, we're we're going to be our own uh, nation." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, Lincoln, like like uh, Blood Angel said, you know, said, "No, uh, uh, we ain't having that. We'll kill you. Yeah. We'll take over." Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to, by force of arms, tell you how you can do things. Right. That's that was that's a, it. a war of aggression, so basically. And snuffing out self determination, people can move and do what they want to do in a free country, right? I mean, I, well, I which, believe which even to today, but, had the South been victorious, there would not be slavery. You think so? I, I think that that's the part. That. I think that that's the part that because because I agree with you now in the this South in the 20th prevailed. century as an African man, you know, um, having these rights. I can see what and having studied Lincoln, I can see what you're saying by it being um, what Scorpion was saying by him being one of the most tyrannical rulers that, and we got to know that he didn't free African people of African descent out of some. Uh, misplay, you know, all of a sudden his conscience got the better of him. It right. was all political. He was but a racist motherfucker, off man. Off the rip. Off the rip. Fucking but racist. I, I think one of the things, though, we were one of those people that benefited from other people's political uh, disagreements. So it's, it's, you know, I think that, and that's where that's twofold for us. But I would love to go back and have everybody jumping in. Why do you think uh, Highway uh, Nomad that had the South won, that in this day and time they would have freed uh, black sl- black people. Well, uh, in those days, the South had its own elite mm-hmm. corporatists, um, and uh, uh, very few, uh, very few of them owned slaves. Mm-hmm. Right, right. The average farmer or or a business person in the South. Didn't have slaves. It was it was the elite that had slaves, and it was in their best interest to create this war. But at the same time, um, you don't get um, millions of people to go to war on your behalf unless they think they have a just cause. Yeah, that's the point. Smack it, dude. Smack, smack it. Smack it. it. <laughs> <laughs> explain. I, I got to explain this to to, to my people. Poor white people did not own slaves. The ones that benefited off the slaves are now the Bank of Americas, the Walmarts, the Bilderbergs, the major corporations. I, I keep saying that. Mm-hmm. So basically, if you're, you're middle class, poor whites, you didn't own slaves. Mm-hmm. And only a small percentage owned slaves. They're the corporations today. So that's basically, you know, basically you're saying people that said that um, George
Georgia was, was wrong for the homosexual bills, but sort of support Saudi Arabia for beheading homosexuals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's all, it's all hypocrisy, you, you know. Inheritance of yeah, slaves, it's, of, of slaves. Right it's there. all hypocrisy. I think that um, one, and when they talk about the Civil War, I don't even know if it was like we say, you know, I don't believe in revisionism. Right. I think that Lincoln's history is a revisionist history, that they've rewritten the history, that they've um, placated and penned it for people of African descent. I don't think it, I don't think he was moved by slavery. I don't think that it, it was about industrialization. It was about, you know, the North not being able to keep up with the thing, the money in the South. Is, and, and what better way to do it? You create a, um, what do they call that when they, um, you got soldiers, but you got, um, I forget what, I don't want to say militia, it's something else. I, I forget the name of they call it, but it was just a surplus. You had a surplus. There's no better way to get me to fight them than when you send a message, you free. Pick up a gun and start right, shooting right, people that have whipped me and whipped my. Hand. So it, it was all balanced. And at the same time, this this Lincoln was like, "What are we gonna do with these Negroes right. now that they're free? Can we ship them back to Africa?" So it wasn't no, yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't no moral thing that all of a sudden he just had this 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 conscious fall on him. Man, one point, man. This is probably a, a little known fact, man. Follow the money. That's Follow right. the fucking yeah. money. Yeah. And yeah. Before the fucking Civil War broke out, the U.S. Treasury was down to fifty million dollars, uh -huh. which is crumbs when you're talking about a whole a nation. A whole nation. Yeah. So fifty million dollars. How are they gonna How are they gonna fill up the treasury with some money? Well, you got the agricultural South. Mm -hmm. We're gonna tax right. the shit, and they call it the moral tax. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but M O R R M O R R I L L tax. And it was like a it it would equate to a thirty five percent increase. In your income taxes, so you're paying 20 percent now. Call it so it, it'd be like down here 50 percent. So the the people at the time, as I understand it, were like, "Whoa, you're not going to tax us, you know, at yeah. fucking 35 percent." Yeah. And so they they took their ball and they went home. Same yeah. same argument and that the founders had against had the exactly. British. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was over five yeah. percent. Yeah. They yeah. went to war over 35 percent. And and today, why the fuck aren't we standing up, man? Yeah. Well, let me ask a question because this, you know, dates back to the, uh, the rally. Because you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm all for the freedom of speech, First Amendment. So, I mean, because this is a very complex question. Um, you know, as a Black Panther, you know, because we 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 look at it as a hate group. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you have the Klan marching up. When do and I ask an anonymous question and I ask the bastard this question? When? At one point, do we suppress free speech? You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, as a black man, you know, like, it's so ironic that that whole wing thing went down because the same guy that I'm not going to mention a name, but they were like pointing at the Confederates. And it, like I said, this is one even playing, this is the Michigan Confederates. He said they started marching towards them. Now, granted, anonymous told me and gave me heads up on who the Michigan better were. So I think I was actually were, talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, so you guys had to kind of school me on who they were. So yeah. the, the UEP Newton Gun Club, they were coming this way. And so they were like, oh, well, you know, they just saw Confederate flags. They're like, oh, they are, they are, they're rushing towards the mountain. So now it's like, I had to, you know, confront and say, no, 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 that's not the clan. That's not the clan. Yeah. And so everybody was calm. And there was this one guy talking about, oh, well, no, that flag means this and that. Now, granted, you know, I'm a black man. Yeah. Uh, we got our red, black, and green flag. So somebody can represent it. I mean, say, well, that's a hate flag towards, you know, white people. You know what I'm saying? So I guess my question is, like, you know, I lost my train of thought, man. I got all of this. I'm sorry. So the black, uh, black Panther train of thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my, yeah, my question is, how, I mean, where do we distinguish, like, like, I guess, I just protect free speech, you know, I mean, as, let me just say this, as a, as a black person, I think, if you suppress the Klan speech, you suppress my speech. So at what point, you know, do we Well, my point, my point of view is okay. rioting and destroying property okay. is not free speech. Okay, okay. So when, is, when you commit violence okay. in the name of free speech, that um, it, it takes away your argument. I mean, just, you know, a hero of, of African Americans in this country is Martin Luther King. Right. He was totally against violence. Right, right. We're against violence. Right. But at the same time, we are for our rights. Right. I could actually right. judge on two for points all of that as well. Not just mm -hmm. white folks.
but for for every American, anybody who wants to consider themselves an American, we're for you. How about okay. how about this, man? I'd like to get back to using your tongue for good things. Okay. And, and, and finding out that both of you guys are Black Panthers is like uh, my mind is blown because you're you're freaking you're freaking cool, man. And and uh, and I like you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna hang out and, for a while. Yeah. And the same same thing with um, you know splinter groups or whatever. But yeah. freedom of speech versus racism. We'll be there. If you guys are spitting truth, you know, uh, then we're going to be there and say, hey, you speak it, bro, and we'll exactly. be there. Nobody fucks exactly. with you. Right. But if you're out there right. spitting racist shit, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Mm -hmm. Right. So, right. And I'm glad you meant that because, like I said, we, you know, we, let me just, we're black nationalists. Mm -hmm. Let me say this for the record. Now, I'm not a black separatist. And I'm not a black supremacist. So I don't think I'm superior over anybody. I don't think nobody's superior over me. Black nationalism, in the sense of how Malcolm X taught it, is that black people be control of their economics and their politics, yeah. which controls the economics. Yeah. That's it. You know what I'm saying? You got black supremacists out there with new ideologies under the banner of red, black, and green. You got black supremacists under the banner of the red, black, and green. Just like, and I said, I related to that how. When the Heritage Now he said, look, man, that's our flag. We want to take it back. I felt that because we got groups that are infiltrating the, the, the Panthers. And me and Yanger, second generation, our, pan, our parents are Panthers. Mm -hmm. Can you I challenge that notion? Please, please do. Yeah. Yeah, not, not me, mean, but when you talk about kind of like a segregating the economics. And I think no, that no, 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 no. First of all, that's black capitalism. So I'm glad you said that. I'm not for black capitalism. That means... I'm only going to buy a beer from you if you're black, and you're not going to buy a beer from me if I'm not black. Is that no? No, no, no. I, I, I think that it's it's, uh, a, it's it's you have you have your uh, you don't have outside interests like global banks and the Federal Reserve dictating pretty much what goes on in your neighborhood. Yeah, basically, whether or, basically. Not, whether or not you get loans, whether or not you get your house refinanced if you need it refinanced right. and uh, I mean that's that's economic freedom that a lot of people enjoy that that doesn't happen in certain neighborhoods See, that's what I wanted to okay. dispel right. in yeah. order to converge yeah. on, on the uh, our money yeah. but with fuck it dude keep taxes within the states yeah. the tax money that's going out to the uh, the feds right it's they're, they're fucking giving it away to countries that hate us and That's right. wars yeah. and all this shit. Right. You know, you want to make a statement with the money? You know, keep the money. Give them you can't, tanks, you can't tax planes. my labor, and I'm not spending my money to support a government or, or to prop up a government that's working against uh, the will of the people. Right, and, right. Like, I feel some kind of way that my tax dollars are supporting Israel. That's bombing Palestinians. I, I, I have a problem with my tax dollars supporting Saudi Arabia, which celebrates beheading 160 people. I and mean, then you know you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? This is where my tax dollars is going. And, yeah. 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 and, and going back, yeah. and going that's, back that's that's to, to like you were saying about, about yeah. uh, right. basically uh, hey, about Planned Parenthood. Yeah. 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 We don't like Planned Parenthood. We don't send money to them countries who will. Russia. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? China. But like you know, the purpose, like we were saying, use your tongue for good things, right? Put your money where your mouth is, put your money into doing good things, and then there's no fucking problem, right? But if our money is going towards uh, this never-ending war, then, um, yeah. then you know, mm -hmm. the, I can't, I can't, why am I, why am I paying into that system? You know, I'm tired of participating in this system exactly. that is fucking, um, yeah, not pushing per perpetual. Per 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 yeah. yeah, and that, and I wanted to go back to we, touch on like what that's people are watching that's me right up. now, especially uh, the uh, leadership and uh, Congress. Uh, they haven't met a war they didn't like. Uh, exactly. It, it I wonder why. But well, one of the things I want to go back, and especially was talking to son when he was talking about, um, you know, nationalism, black nationalism, and our control of uh, communities. Like Brother Malcolm said, he said that anywhere that you find the black people, people of African descent, in the my majority of a particular area. They should control the economics, the politics, and the school curriculum of that community. We're saying that, like we look at, I'm, you know, coming from Cleveland, you have Italian-American communities. When you ride through the community, you see a flag flying. And, you know, when you go into that, they occupy the, the buildings, and when you go into their stores, nine times out of ten, it's Italian-American. Same with China.
Chinese, they call them Little Chinatown, Little yeah. Italy, this and that. When yeah. you go into our communities, they call them the ghetto or the hood. Yeah. And when you go into the stores, you don't see us behind the counters. You see other people in, in Cleveland, predominantly the Arabs. Down here in um, uh, Georgia, it's a lot of the Hindis. Uh, you see a lot of other people reaping, and they say our communities are broke, which is ugh, yeah. You see a lot of the, the people reaping the economic benefits, and what happens is it leaves our community. We still live in hovels. Our roads are still tore up. We're not getting none of the money. And the little bit of black market that we used to have in our community, we used to have something called a candy lady. You know, and the candy lady was the, you know, he could even be a man. We just termed a candy lady. was a person that would sell candy and maybe a loose cigarette. Here and this and that. Now what's happening, there's not even a black market. The stores do what's illegal. They sell loose cigarettes. They take uh, food stamps for money. And give you give them the food stamp, they exchange the money. So they're even coming in and engaged in the black market in the black communities doing illegal stuff in our community. And we're saying this, that you take that money and you go to your hovels and your enclaves where the rest of you guys live and you spend that money and none of that is, is trickling in our communities. We feel the effect of that money leaving our communities. And we're saying that we live in these communities and in order for people to be able to work mutually with other people, not only should they have be self-determinists, but they should be a Shut people up. of uh, pride. You know what I'm saying? And what happens is, when you don't have success in our communities, we start to emulate other people. We got rappers now calling themselves the Latino, you know, a fist to my Latino community, but we have rappers, black rappers calling themselves the Amigos. They're talking about getting a plug from Mexico. Before that, you have black rappers calling themselves Bambino and, and, and Gotti and all this. So then they want to be a tight man. Everybody the, in the a black community, we want to be everyone but people of African descent. So we're saying in order for us to sit at the table and have a mutual understanding, we have to have pride and know we are the good and bad of our history, the good and bad that has happened to us, and the good and bad that we inflict upon ourselves and start to work from that standpoint. So we're saying that's what we're saying that we have to control our monies and, and know well, and that's our where it starts spirit. is economic freedom yeah. without economic freedom it's hard to have any other kind of liberty yeah right. and Agreed. Agreed. When, you, when you look at how the federal government basically greases the skids mm -hmm. for um foreigners to come in yeah and uh are, are, are the government provides everything but the labor Absolutely. They, yeah. they, they'll, they'll, they'll point you at a distressed property mm -hmm. or a distressed store yep. say, you know, we're going to give you your inventory, we're going to give you a, a cushion yep. and stuff, go at it. Yep. And of course, um, you know, they're, they're going to charge what they want. Yeah. And if they don't like the people in the neighborhood and the neighborhood basically makes them feel unwelcome, guess what they're going to do? Call the police. Well, no, no, they're <laughs> going to say, well, this little two dollar item yeah, is now four fifty, and they're going to put the plexiglass yeah. up so you can't you get to the ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. go to the hall. Put my hands you, on you. You can't, you can't drive for you know twenty five yeah. miles to yeah. a place where you can get it cheaper. Yeah, yeah. this is your neighborhood. Yeah, and we're, I, I worked in one of those stores as a security guard yeah. in downtown Atlanta. Okay, once upon a time. So you already and know. And I watched them mark the prices up. Man, three or four times. And, so, uh, you, know, you can go right down the street to the, agenda. The, to the grocery. You can go right down the street to the grocery store and, mm -hmm. and buy something for ninety nine cent. Yeah. You go to the local little store, you're gonna pay three dollars. Right. It, it's, well, that's why they say in in certain communities, they're deprived communities. We have what's called non community food deserts. We don't have grocery stores. The accessibility to grocery stores and particular type of grocery stores are particular type of foods that are nutritious. That are So we're saying that, and this is why it's an honor to sit here too with constitutional militia. We're saying that our constitutional rights, the Bill of Rights and everything is systematic. We're, we're being specifically targeted for certain discrimination, economic exploitation and oppression because we understand the history of this country and like... Um, um, blood agent was saying that we want to change. We understand the history. We're not what was me. One of the people that I do look to, I look to the Jewish community. And I think that they have a fine example after what happened to them with fascist Hitler. They said never again. They said never again. That won't happen to us again. So they got their lobbyists. Now they got the state of Israel. They got their own. I'm from, like I said, coming from Cleveland. You know, they got enclaves. They got the synagogues. They got their own gro kosher grocery store. They have all of these things. So we have to, as a people, we're saying that America hasn't treated us fairly 
They brought us over here on some BS. Crimes were committed against the people. I'm not an integrationist. I'm not, you know, a big, uh, uh, um, I'm not a civil rights activist, but I do see the importance of the civil rights movement in our development and evolution as black people here in America. And I thank those brothers and sisters, black and white, that fought for equality for human beings to get us to the point to be able to sit at the table and say, okay, we fought for that. Now that you do recognize us as uh, human beings in a certain level of equality, at least on paper, then we want our rights that well, are see, entitled that, that to us on paper. Even, even back in the beginnings of the civil rights movement, and I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to remember some of that uh -huh. stuff. Um, you know, the uh, federal government basically demonized its leaders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I remember, uh, you know, reading articles and stuff of how big of a Marxist that uh, Martin Luther King was. Mm -hmm. And of mm -hmm. course, I've been raised up in the Cold War. Yeah. It's like any, anybody that's a Marxist, you know, puts a question in front of us that we haven't got to yet. What's that? Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and I'm listening. I hope I'm not interpreting it wrong. But the uh, the idea, it, it sounds like a democratic idea where you have a majority of black people in a community, the economics that needs to stay, you know, uh, it needs to flow uh, from black person to black person, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems on its face a little bit contradictory to. Martin Luther King were you judge it is. by the contents of his character. It is. So I'm wondering, it sounds like an idea, although it may it may be good to you know gain a toehold, but I'm wondering if that um, should not um, you know, be extinguished and, and we focus and converge on um, yeah. our money being and our jobs being shipped across the uh, that's, that's part right, of it. Right. That's mm -hmm. part of it, but that's I think that is feet. the first step. That, that's part of oh, it, yeah, but that's a, like a, a second only step. There's a huge vacuum cleaner sucking yeah. money out of the hood. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's sucking out, out of the nation. Out of the but that's, right, right, that's, right. That's, that's part of it, but, but you know, speaking from, that's a second step, speaking from my we first have to understand the economics that affect us directly. We can't understand how the nation is being, especially, I'm not going to say for, for people who have not practiced self-determination. At one point in time, we were deprived of self-determination. Before people who have not practiced self-determination, it's harder for them to understand the global, uh, the international uh, ramifications of what's really happening with this NAFTA thing and all of that so stuff. It's, it's, it's hard for us to really... And what's true at that microcosm mm -hmm. is also true at that microcosm. Yeah. And, you know, me personally, man, and I'm not putting myself on a pedestal no. or anything, man, but I'm, I'm saying, like, a, uh, I go back to bankruptcy because that's what I do, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I get to, I'm so thankful, man, that I get to uh, put bread on the table for my family by doing a little more than using my tongue yeah. and my knowledge yeah. to help people um, get rid of their debt problems, mm -hmm. you know. And whether they file, whether they don't file, you know, I, I help them out either way. Whether I get paid, I don't get paid. I listen and I sit, make suggestions and help people out. And um, that, you know, at the microcosm, you know, you know apply that to the macrocosm, mm -hmm. and it's uh, and and I just want to see you know, good people yeah. um, doing good things for their fellow man and. And at some point, at some point, this, you know, I don't know how it, it's fucking ironic to me that in 1960, people had such a negative opinion of uh, interracial marriage, for example. Mm -hmm. right? 3% of the people in America thought, whoa, that's okay. 97% said, that's kind of fucked up. Mm -hmm. And then 2008, 19, something like that, you know, it's up to 90%. Yeah, that, that to me is like you just changed the whole fucking perception of the country right. with relate uh, yeah. with the racial relations. 
it, that's the way it fucking should be. All we yeah. gotta do is go 10 more percent mm -hmm. and 100% of the people are behind it. But right now it's like we're taking, we're going backwards. But who, I mean, my thing, I'm sorry to jump in, it's like, you know, who loses? One of the things I hope this guy, I hate to be, you know, I have to be devil's advocate come out. We're dealing with a thing that's called, being honest, white privilege. You guys, as, as white people, you have what's called white privilege. No? We call it's it. Not we, we call it. Is that we we do. Do. It's yeah. white privilege. White privilege. You born in 73? You born in 73? When you born? 72. 72. When were you born? Uh, I was born in 83. Ah, uh, you were born? born? Uh, when you born? When you born? 57. All right. You might, you might have some <laughs> <sex. laughs> oh, <man. laughs> When I was born, all men were created equal. When I was born, I didn't have a fucking silver spoon in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? You came from the same fucking upbringing that I came from. If you ain't rich, you sitting here because if you were rich, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. I wasn't rich. White privilege is not about money. White, white privilege is this. White privilege is when the police pull you over. You're like pulling me over for yeah i got my gun when the police pull us over whoop, oh shit you know what i'm saying it may be life and death it's that's the perception the brush then it's that's it's, it's the, the brush. It, it, it is but it's the perception that when and i mean we have to be it's like i'm saying i'm just being honest when you guys pulled up on me like i got out with guns and i was like man i hope son that had his facts right on who we who we interviewing? <laughs> you know, that that could goes go. back to hey, the cop in the pool. Right, the left, right, the right paradigm. In the cop in the pool, there's an agenda for being white. It's a damn damn way out of my pocket. Back, back in the day, I, I like to drink and drive. Yeah. And uh, I've. I've, I've been I've been charged by a white cop, and I've been charged by a black cop. Uh huh. So you know. It, yeah. For me, uh, you know, privilege didn't work. I, I mean, it's 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 the way that it's. We gotta close out. Oh yeah. man! Is, oh, we, just can we get you, when we gonna get you guys back? Yeah, yeah man. We gonna be able to do this again. We definitely gotta do this again. Yeah, yeah man. We, we don't stop, man. We don't stop. We'll hit that U stream. Just, just going think of if the people oh. united, man. What we can do. Oh yeah. Man, oh yeah. We be. Oh yeah. We be. We be. That's what. I mean, we, we want to be there and provide the security for the people. We want the people to get their shit together. But one thing, man, I just got to say, if it's drawn along racial lines, I got to say, it's not a racial issue until race is the issue. Mm -hmm. But race can't be the fucking, you know, issue in every fucking situation. Really? So, really? Fucking the government sure thinks it can. Yeah, let me close it out this saying this. When I when I when I talked about black economics, I want to create another Wall Street. I want to I mean, I'm sorry, Black Wall Street. Another Auburn and another uh, 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 Tulsa. Uh, Tulsa. Because what happened there, you had that's what I call black capitalism. Mm -hmm. Meaning you had prominent black areas, and they starved out the whites when the poor whites came in, and, and basically, you know, I'm not down with starving out anything. So I'm thinking of a, of a system that, that basically, that, that, that feeds everybody, you know what I'm saying? But I think we need a more transparent government, you know what I'm saying? I think we need a more transparent economic system where, like yeah. I said, where your kids can read Brandon's school book, my school book. I agree. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Your water is filled with my water is filled. So you know, I'm self-determination. I'm self-determination. But I think that every people, right. every people right. going to have to do right. that. For themselves. For themselves. Yeah. I think that yeah. one of the things that, that so called made yeah, that so called made America different from everybody else was that you did have these different nationalities, but they formed like every other country is a nation based on that. They have China is filled with Chinese. It's like Afghanistan is filled with Afghanis. You know that Russia is filled with Russians. America is filled with different people of different nationalities and ethnicities. I think this is one of the things that gave America an advantage, a distinct advantage, because you do have all of these ethnicities. But I, I, I have to say this, for the African-handed black man in America is one of the people, is a creation of America. It is one of the people that doesn't have a distinct, specific personality. You know what I'm saying? We don't identify, we've been disconnected from Africa, totally in every kind of fake, shape, form, and fashion, except for us and those who have decided to go back and then mentally and culturally and spiritually, but even those brothers and sisters who have decided to take that route, like I tell them, shit, Africa's a continent, dog, not a country. So what country in Africa? What culture in Africa? What, you know what I'm saying? I share that, I share that belief, but let me tell you why the, why the cards are stacked against us. Cronyism yeah. Yeah. and the government regulating. It, if it wasn't for cronyism and it wasn't